Ahoy there! In this video I will give you a small introduction into R and R Studio. I will show you the handling of R Studio, how to use packages and commands, and how to import data. Have fun! Let's start learning R. In the description of the video you find two links, one to download R and one to download R Studio. Just download both files and then install them. I already downloaded them. I will show you one particular thing when you install R. First install R. Here you should select English. And then you should deselect this part, the message translation. This has the background. If you have an error message or something like that in your R output, then you can easily search for the error messages. If it's for example in German or in Arabic or something like that, then you have a problem to find solutions in the internet because the main language is just plain English. Okay, and then the rest just click on next. And at this part, especially important when you update R, then you should deselect this because the R data files are usually associated with R Studio and not R. So you want that R Studio opens when you click on an R data file and not R. So deselect this here and the rest you can leave. So that's fine. And for the R Studio, you don't have to take care of anything. Just let it install. Okay, let's start R Studio. This is how it looks when it starts the first time. Here it's asking if you want to send crash reports to the team of RStudio. I usually say no. Okay, that's it. At first I want to give you a small introduction to the settings of RStudio and then we continue. Okay, what you see at the moment, here you see R. It's running inside this window and on the right side you see two other windows. I will introduce them later. But first, let's go to Tools and to Global Options. We have to change two things. At the beginning, here in General, we go to Graphics and on Windows, we select Cairo and Anti-Aliasing, you just leave Default. In this way, all the graphics that will be displayed on the right side here in the window later, they will have a higher quality. And additionally, you can change also the appearance of the RStudio window. I usually like to change this. I prefer a dark design because it's more easy on the eyes. I prefer idle fingers. On the right side you always see how it will look like when you select the theme. For example, eye plastic looks like this. I prefer idle fingers. Okay, then just click on OK. And here I'm asking if we want to restart our studio. Yes, just click on yes. And that's it. Now our studio looks darker. What you also should notice in the video here that the text is quite small. Um, let's increase the size of the text. You can increase the size by holding control key and pressing the plus key on the numeric keyboard. So I hold control, click plus and you see it getting it's getting bigger. If you want to decrease the size, just hit the minus sign on the numeric block. And let's go for that. Okay, let's start from scratch. I will first show you how to create an empty R code file. And with that, I will introduce the layout of R Studio, and then we will work with the given tutorial R code file. Okay, we can start an empty R code file by clicking here on the left side on the small symbol and then select R script. And this is how R Studio will look most of the time when you work. Here on the left side, you see the R script section. At the bottom left side, you see the R section. And the idea is that you write here your R code. For example, let's just say one plus one. And then you send this R code to R by hitting run and R analyzes or calculates what you want from it. Okay, I will show you. Just click on the line that you that you want to run and then click on run. And you see it's getting sent 
to r, and r gives the result. 1 plus 1 is 2. The same happens when you hit Control and Enter, then the same happens here. Okay, that's the left side of our studio. On the right side, this is the environment section and also history, but this is not so important. The environment section is the important thing. Here you will find the data sets that you imported, the results that you saved, the objects that you saved or the variables that you saved and so on. So here is all your data stuff visible. And here at the bottom right, you see, for example, folders, but also later we will see um, here the graphics. If we plot some graphics, also we see here packages. Packages are basically additional abilities that we can teach R. And also very important is the help tab. Here you can find all the useful information on commands and packages. I will show you all the stuff later in more detail. Okay, let's start with the R tutorial file. To open the R tutorial script file, just go to this symbol or go to file open. I would like to use this symbol. And the R tutorial file is in this folder and let's open it. Okay, you see here we have a new tab. With the R tutorial, we can still access our old untitled R script, but let's stay here and let's go step by step through here. And let's start with comments and commands. You see already that comments in my theme in a brownish color, so you can write comments by using the hashtag sign. Everything that has a hashtag sign in front will be ignored by R. So if I mark this and click on run, you see R doesn't care, doesn't give me any result. Okay, to the R and R data files, I will come later. Let's start with the first few things that are noteworthy. Um, I already showed you that with Control and Enter, you can run a single line of code. So if I select this or if I just click in this line and hit Run, then it works or just Control Enter and works too. If you by accident have here your local language and not English, then you can force the English language by using this command by hitting Run. This you have to do every time you start our studio, if you want to have it in English. I don't need to run this command because mine is already English. Okay, R is basically nothing more than a very, very profound calculator. So it can just calculate a sum. We just run it. We see 12 plus two is 14, great. The exponential function of one is 2.72. Also fine. We can also run several lines at once. For that, we have to mark both lines. And then by Control Enter, we run both. And you see those two lines just got executed again. R can also understand text. This is helpful for, for example, categorical variables. So if I just run it, you see I feed text and R returns the same text. R can also use Boolean. This means can understand true and false statements and also can output true and false statements. So if I ask R is 12 bigger than zero, then R should give me true, which works. And the same for smaller, there should be as false. Okay. And when we feed R with true and false commands, we don't have to type out true or false. It's enough to just type a T for true and a F for false. So if I just enter it, a T gives me a true and a F gives me a false. So if I just type true, it's the same. Okay, R can also handle equal, smaller or equal, greater or equal and not equal, for example. If I want to say not equal, I have to set an exclamation mark in front of the equal sign. And if I run this, I'm asking, is 12 not equal to zero? And then R gives me a true. And here is 12 bigger or equal to zero, true. Is 12 smaller or equal to zero, false. And here 
it's important you have to know that the equal sign in this context has to be written as a double equal sign. Because if we run this, then there's the we ask is one plus one equal to two and R gives us a true. If we write it like this, only with one equal sign, we will get an error message because this equal sign is used for giving values to objects. So for example, if we want to create an object which is called number and we want to give this number the value two, then we have to write number equal two. But we will take a closer look soon at this. Okay, like I said, R uses objects and objects usually have names. In this example, the name is just number. If we just try it out, what happens when we just type number, then R says, well, the object number was not found. Okay, so we have to first create the object number in order to be able to access it. How do we create objects? One easy way is to just give an object a value. So let's create a object which is called number and we give it the value 12 by using this sign. So it's just a smaller sign and a minus sign together and it forms basically a small arrow. We could also use an equal sign. However, this is not very common, at least in the R community. So let's run this. And you see that R didn't return anything, but we see on the right side here in the environment, we have a new object and it has the value 12. We can also give objects text as a value. Let's run it. And we see on the right side, there's a new object with the number super text and it has the value text. We can also access or show the content of the objects by just writing the name of the object. So we have now two objects, number and super text. So let's return the value of number. And you see, we got 12. And for super text, we should get text, which also happens. Great. So, and what happens if we just give another value to the same object that we already have? Let's try it out. And now look on the right side. The super text got overwritten with the new text. Before it was just text and now it's much better text. And the previous text content is overwritten. So this you have to know. There will be no warning or anything if you overwrite an object with a new value, then the old value is just gone. Okay, this next thing is very important. We can add several values to one object. So several values might be several texts or several numbers. We do that with brackets, commas, and a C. This C stands for combine. So if we want to add ASDF, sausage, and cheese to the object super duper text, we use a C and brackets and the elements that we separate with commas. And I'll show you now a nice thing of R. If we, if we enter this, if I just enter the left bracket, then R automatically enters the right bracket, which is already quite nice. And if we just enter now the text, then you see what happens when I just mark it. And if I use this quotation mark, then R automatically writes quotation marks around the text. So I just mark it with a double click, use the quotation mark and it's done. Easy peasy. Okay, let's run it. And you see, I don't have to click at the end of the line to run it. It doesn't matter where the cursor is. So I can just be also at the beginning or in between. It always works. Now we have a new super duper text object that only consists of characters. So only consists of text. It has three elements and those elements are called ASTF sausage cheese. If I access it, you see the content. The same with just numbers. We combine several numbers and save it under numbers. On the right side, you see we have only numbers, eight pieces, and these are the values. If we run it, you see the content. Okay, for each object, we can always access 
just subsets of it. So we can say, ah, oh, I just want to show the seventh position of this object. So in the case of numbers, let's just access the seventh value in this object. We do that by using those brackets and then just write the position that we want. So here it's saying we want the seventh value of the numbers. Keep in mind that in R, the first position is labeled with one, but for example, in other languages like in Python, the first position is labeled as zero. So keep in mind in R, the first position is always one. And if we do that, we get the number that is on the seventh position, which was 11, great. We can also access several parts of an object or several elements. In this way, I want to access now the fifth and the sixth element of the numbers. Let's try this out. What happens when we just naively write 5,6 in there? Well, we get an error. It doesn't seem to work. But remember how we did combine several numbers. We used the combine sign and then the commas and the brackets. In order to access two elements of this object, we just first use this outer bracket and then we use the combine action on five and six. So what happens if we run this? Then we really get the fifth and the sixth element of the numbers object. The same with our super duper text. Here we want to access the first and the third object, which should be ASDF and cheese. Let's try it out. Okay, it worked. And one uh, also quite important thing for you to know is how R handles missings. Missings are always labeled as NA, not available. So here I just create the same as numbers as before. This is basically the same, but I deleted the fourth element. And what you just saw when I mark something, then R Studio automatically highlights identical parts in the R script. You see here is a highlight. So if I, for example, highlight numbers, then I see automatically where in the whole document I use the word numbers, which is quite practical later when you have bigger R scripts. Okay, let's take a look at something with a missing value. Let's create it. You see here on the right, basically the same like before, only here's a missing value. Let's recall it and we see, yes, everything normal. Okay, now we learned the very basics of using R. Let's learn commands. First, how do commands usually look like? Usually commands are in this way. First, we have the command name and then we have brackets. And inside the brackets, you feed the command data and options. Data might be just your um, data frame and then you can select different options. For example, how to treat missing values or which method you want to use for calculating the error and so on. One example is the command mean. Mean calculates the mean of a sequence of numbers. And we still have our numbers. And here at this moment, I want to show you another trick. I marked numbers. And when I mark a special part of a line and hit then run, then only this marked part will be executed. So take a look what happens when I click on run. You see at the bottom, only numbers was executed. So in this way, I can basically take a look at different parts of my commands. Also, for example, up here, here at super duper text, if I just mark this and run, so I hit control enter, then you see at the bottom, I just ran C13, so which is the two numbers. Okay, back to the mean. We see here we feed the mean, those numbers, and let's see what happens when we execute it. Then the mean of those numbers is six. Okay, what happens if we feed the mean some missings? So remember in this object, there was a missing. Let's see what happens if we run it. And now we see the mean only produces a missing value, which is not necessarily what we want. We want maybe that the missing value is being excluded. How do we do that? Let's assume that we don't know how to do it. How could we solve this problem? Remember, back at the beginning, I introduced the help section. So our goal is now to just find the help of this command. One way to do it, which is the wrong way or which is the more complicated way, is to go here 
and search for mean, but we don't want to do it. Let's do it the lazy way. The lazy way works by clicking inside the command that we want the help of. I usually go to the end of the command, which is more reliable, and then just hit on the keyboard the F1 key. Let's do it. And you see on the right side something happened. We automatically got the documentation of our mean command. Let's see how it looks. Usually uh, the help files of commands are structured the same way. We usually get a description, then we get a typical usage, and then we get detailed information on the things that we feed the command. So we see here the mean wants some data, which is X. We can also use the option trim. We can also use the option NARM and additional options. And here we see what it means. X is just an R object and it tells us what kind of data we can feed the mean. We can use trim if we want. And what is NARM? This is the option that we need because NARM removes the missing values in our data before calculating the mean. So let's just do it. I just delete it and I show you another cool trick of R Studio. If we write now a comma, then R is expecting that we maybe want to write an option. And take a look what happens when I hit the tab key on the keyboard then automatically you see R is presenting possible options that we could enter here. And this kind of color, this pinkish violet color, represents always the options that are available for the command. So in our case, we could enter X, we could enter Trim, or we could enter NARM. Let's use this option. We can just click on here, then it will be automatically inserted. We can also use the tab key again. I show you, I just hit the tab to get this small pop-up again. And if I go with the arrow keys down and use now the tab key, then it's getting automatically inserted. And the tab key I highlight because the tab key always has this auto completion function. What does it mean? For example, when you don't know the specific name of a command, but you know roughly how it sounds, for example, let's say, well, I knew that there was a mean command, but I don't exactly know the name. So what you can do is just start typing mean. And then after a while, R automatically gives a pop-up and suggests possible commands that starts with the same letters. And you see, here's the command mean. You can either click on it or use the tab key to autocomplete. You can force this pop-up by just hitting the tab key anytime. Then you just immediately get all the commands that start with the letters ME. For example, if we search for some correlation and we just start typing cor, and then R automatically reacts and gives us the suggestion to use cor or cor test. On the right side, you always see some snippets of the help page quite a nice feature. Okay, back to the mean. We wanted to remove the missings true to activate this option. So now it means we want to calculate the mean of those values and we want to remove the missing value. Let's run it. And the result is a 6.3. Great. The same or similar, we can uh, calculate the standard deviation. And the standard deviation if we hit F1 on the key, you see that the standard deviation also has this remove missing values option. Let's run this. Then we get a value for the standard deviation. R can also create plots. This is just the super very basic plot. There are special additions to R that are specialized for creating beautiful plots. You can e even create 3D plots. Okay, let's just plot our numbers, see what happens. So on the right side, in the tab plots, we have now a new plot. And here is the, on the X axis, we see the index. And on the Y axis, we see the value of the numbers. So the first value of num numbers is a one, seventh value is a 11 or so. Okay. And it's also very important to know, like I already mentioned, 
We can not only save numbers and text to objects, we can even save the results of commands. So this was our command, the mean of the numbers, and we want to save the result in this object. We do that by just writing the command, use our small arrow symbol, and then define the object. Let's run it. You see, we don't get an output. Let's access this object again. And we see here is a saved value. Okay, until now, I showed you a little bit how to use RStudio and I showed you how to use commands in RStudio. And now I will show you how to increase the functionality of RStudio or R. This we do by so-called packages. We can install packages to give R new abilities. So for example, R by itself is very limited to conduct factor analyses. And for that, there are special packages which give R the ability to conduct factor analyses. So if we install the respective package that teaches R factor analysis, then R has additional commands that we can use in order to conduct the factor analysis. So how to install packages? We can do it in two ways. I first show you the way with the mouse, and then I show you the other way that I prefer via a command. So first, how to install packages with the mouse. We just go here to the right side at packages, and click here on install and here we can enter the package name how do we get package names by for example googling or asking colleagues so one package that is quite important for us is the psych package if we start entering here the psych package then you already see there are suggestions and this is our package click on install then it will be installed however i recommend usually using a command and the command to install packages is named install packages. And here we enter psych with quotation marks. And then I usually also add the option that we want to install dependencies. Psych has some special commands, for example, calculating omega. And for calculating omega, you have to conduct a factor analysis. And in order that this command omega works, the package that is responsible for conducting factor analyses has to be installed too. So that we don't have to manually install all the packages referred on by Psyche, we just use this option. Okay, let's run it. And now the package will be installed and you see all those additional packages are there because they are dependencies of Psyche. Okay, now we have the psych package installed. In order to use it, we have to load the package basically into the working memory of R by using the library command. Every time when we start our studio, we have to reload the packages that we want to use in our R code. So let's just run this and you see it worked. No error message, no nothing, which is good. And with this psych package, we got a new command, which is called describe. Let's see what happens when we use the describe on our numbers object. And here you see, this is the output. We, use, we have one variable, eight cases or eight values. And this is the mean, standard deviation, median, and so on. Awesome, okay. And do you remember earlier when I tried to use correlation? We got two commands when I started to write core. And now see what happens when I use core now. Now you, you see we have more commands and you see here on the right side, if it's called stats, this means that this command is from base R and here you see psych, this is a command that was added by the psych package. So now we have, for example, a core two and on the right side, you always see the help. Okay, now I will show you how to import data and then how to run the descriptives on it. And after that, we are done for the day. Let's import data. At the beginning, before we import the data, we should always set a working directory. The working directory is just the current directory where everything is being saved when you click the save button. And this is also the directory where R looks into when you want to import a file. 
So, and we find out which is the current working directory by just run the command get working directory. Let's run it. So let's set the working directory of my R tutorial. Let's take a look. I already created the R tutorial folder with the data set and the R file is located in users documents R tutorial. So let's just copy paste this directory with control C and control V into here. And we have to change the backslashes into slashes because Windows for whatever reasons uses backslashes for directories. Let's run this. You see it worked without an error message or warning. Let's run this get working directory again to check if it worked. And now you see our working directory is what we set. Awesome, it worked. Okay, let's open a data set. We can open it via clicks or via command. I show you first the clicky way because with this we can generate the code automatically. So we don't have to write it by hand. Okay, we can import new data sets by clicking here on the top left at environment to import data set. And then we have to select what kind of data it is. It is SPSS in our case. And now this only happens once. It asks us if we allow it to install a package that enables R to open this SPSS file. Of course, we allow it. And now the packages are being installed. Okay, this is the window where we can import data. Here on the top right, we click on Browse. And because we set the working directory to our R tutorial directory, we are immediately here. Okay, let's select the student's performance and click on Open. And now you see a preview of the data. And at the bottom, you see the code preview. Let's just take the two lines. The third line I will explain later. Control C, click on Cancel, and then Control V. Okay, what is written here? Here we load the package that enables R to open SPSS files. Let's run it. And here we use the command read SPSS file and give it the name of the file. And we save it with this name. I don't like to use this name. I want to use just dataset. Now let's run this line. And you see on the right side, a new dataset was created has 1000 observations and 8 variables. And now let's take a look at the data set. You see this view command that we saw a few seconds before in that window. Let's run it and check what happens. And you see a new tab was opened. And within the tab you see an overview of all the data. You see here the number of cases. Let's go down. And we see there are 1000 cases in our data set. Great. Let's close it. We can also view within the R window by using head. Head is giving us the first few lines of the data set. You see here the first few lines. It also gives us the type of data, which is a tibble in this case, six cases and eight variables. And you see here the gender variable is made out of text. Also the race ethnicity variable, the lunch variable and so on. But the math score has a double. Double means it's a decimal number. So it's a number that can have additional digits behind the comma. And tail gives us the last cases in our data set. We run this, we see these are the last cases. Okay, if there are many, many variables, then maybe we don't see all the variable names and so on. So for that, we can just output all the variable names of our data set, which is sometimes quite helpful. The command is names and it gives us all the names of our variables. Let's just output all the values of the math score. For that, remember how we accessed earlier the one element of our numbers object. If we just run it again, it was this. And to access, for example, the eighth element, we just use the brackets and wrote down an eight. We run this, we just get the last element. And now it's the same with the data set. But the data set is now a little bit different than our numbers object. Our numbers object was just a line of numbers, but our data set is now a matrix of numbers. 
This means we have not only one line of elements, we have several lines of elements. So we have rows, which is our cases, and we have columns, which is our variables. So in order to access our math variable, we have to access the column, which is named math score. And we can access rows, our cases, and columns separately. And for that, we have two positions. We separate the rows and the columns with a comma. The number or the name that is before the comma is referring to the cases. And the place here on the right side of the comma is referring to our columns, which refers to our variables. So if we want to access the math score of all cases, we have to access our column called math score. And we want to access all cases. And we access all cases by just leaving this field empty. And R doesn't even need spaces, so we just write it this way. So let's run it. And you see, it gives us an object that is called a tipple and gives us all the values of the math score. But we can also now just save it as an extra object. We do that by just, let's copy paste this. Let's just save it as math. Okay, we take a look at math, just click here, see what happens. Then you see these are now all the math scores. Great. By the way, you can close tabs with a middle click. You don't have to hit this little X, you just can use the middle mouse key and then it just closes. Okay, I already told you that we can access rows and columns separately. So if we just want to access the fourth case, then we write it this way and leave this space right of the comma blank. And now we get what we want. And what happens if we want to access the first 10 cases? There are two possibilities to do it. We can either use the, let's say, hardworking method, which is writing down all the numbers from one, two, three, up to 10. Let's run it and you see, yes, we get 10 cases. However, R also gives us the possibility to a shortcut. And the shortcut is if we want to create the numbers from one to 10, we just write one colon or double dot 10. We just run this part and take a look and we see a one colon 10 gives us all the numbers from one to 10, which is quite nice. So let's run it. Okay, and now let's just get the math score of the first and hundredth case, which is basically combining what we learned before. And if we do that, we get two values. And now we are nearing the end. Let's use the describe command from a few minutes earlier. First on the whole data set. Let's see what happens. Okay, it worked. We have the variable gender. And the variable gender has a small star symbol. And this star symbol means that the categorical variable was converted into a numerical variable. Okay, so just take care that you interpret those values with caution. But our math score, for example, it was numerical. And here we see the mean of the math score. It is, it's like 66.1 and the standard deviation and the median and, the, and so on. And now I show you one last thing. What happens if we want the description of the math variable? You see the auto completion in action again. I just entered math. It gives me math score as a suggestion. I just click on it. It works automatically. What happens if I run this? Oh, we get an error message. This is strange. Let's take a look at this object first. And this object, we see it's a tipple, okay, and it's basically just the numbers of the math score. And let's take a look at the description of the describe command. Let's open it with F1, the help file, and you see, let's take a look, here's the description, the general usage. What do we have here? Here at arguments, X. X has to be a data frame or a matrix. However, if we take a look here, this is a tipple. Welcome to R. Sometimes it works, sometimes it just doesn't work, and sometimes the solution is complicated or too easy that it's hard to figure it out. I would fix it by changing this type. 
so which is a tipple in this case, I change this into a data frame and then it might work. What is the command for converting it into a data frame? It is s dot data frame. If we use it and copy paste this thing in here, this command converts this thing into a data frame. Let's just run it now. And you see, it works. We can compare it with the previous description. Let's take a look. Math score has a 66.09 mean. And what do we have here? Also 66.09. Nice. Okay. You learned the basic stuff, commands, packages, and the general usage of RStudio. And now I will show you how to save everything. In RStudio, you can save two things. First, you can save your R code or R script. You save it by hitting here on the small save symbol. If you created a new R script file, then you have to enter a name, hit on save. In our folder, you see here we have a new example R. Okay. If you save only the R script, then all the variables that we saved earlier will be gone the next time when you open RStudio. To avoid deleting all our created objects, we can also save this part. And this part we save by hitting here this small save, save workspace icon. And if we click save and take a look in our folder, then you see we got now this workspace tutorial, our data. Okay. And also good to know is when you now close our studio, then all the opened R script files will be saved, but not the environment. So this will be deleted. I will show you how it looks. If you click here, save, then even this stuff will be automatically restored when you start our studio again. But I click now, don't save. And if I open our studio again, you will see that both our R scripts are still there and even the old data set that I didn't close. However, this data set is not stored here anywhere. When I close it, it should be gone for good. In order to load our variables and our stuff again, we just click here on open. And then you see we haven't set our working directory yet. So we are not in our folder from before. So we have to navigate here and then click on our R data file. And there you see everything is back like it was. Keep in mind that our packages are not loaded at the moment. So our packages like heaven and our psych package are not loaded. So the command describe will not work at the moment. You see, it's not finding the function describe. So we have to reload the psych package, then it works. Okay. And remember, every time when you restart RStudio, you have to set the um, working directory again. So all your R scripts usually start with the set working directory command and you load the libraries that are important for you. So for us, it would be psych and it would be haven. That's all for today. I wish you all the best. Good luck and bye bye.